uh, online and watching. So that's good for me. <coughs> so tonight um, I'd like to uh, go back to the first session we did uh, where I talked you through uh, visualization for depth and this uh, goes out uh, to Darren who was asking uh, about uh, depth adaption uh, while uh, while at home and I said it's it's quite difficult um, but visualization is the main main one uh, you, you kind of want to get uh, get used to doing so uh, later on I'll go through that with you um, hopefully uh, everybody's um, <clears throat> everybody's uh, kind of keeping up some sort of exercise regime now it's super important to do exercise specifically for free diving which is uh, going to be um, all body exercise so cycling is good for you running's good for you not so much but it's good for you but we really need uh, flexibility core muscles hip um, engagement so uh, anything that involves the whole body well, we're looking looking to do so i mentioned before if you can get a session with um, Chaz it would be awesome um, but there are loads of really good uh, things online especially now uh, everybody's everybody's putting stuff out online um, I would personally suggest some of the, the jiu-jitsu warm-ups that um, you can see on YouTube now where they're really working the shoulders and, and really kind of um, looking at trying to get the posture right um, and, and, dry, uh, and, and getting the core muscles uh, working as well. So uh, a fantastic one that uh, Tom, big shout out to Tom by the way, who's one of our strength and conditioning coaches. Uh, brilliant exercise tonight so laying on your belly uh, with your thumbs up they call it a back burner and really uh, pulling the, the hands up so you're laying on your belly lifting your head and your shoulders up just three seconds here three seconds here three seconds here and you can really feel the shoulders working um, and and the back and the posture and that's really going to be good for your uh, free immersion which is what the the visualization is going to be for uh, later tonight so really working the upper body and the shoulders um, really simple exercise laying down on the floor it takes under a minute to do it okay uh, but really good for uh, the upper the, the shoulder blades and the upper back okay. don't forget Flexibility is 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 key, uh, is king. So get your foam rollers out and keep working the upper upper uh, spine, well the whole spine, but particularly the upper spine. Um, we forget how much we exercise that when we're uh, in the no tank sessions because we're just swimming all the time and we're playing games and looking around and, and trying to monofin. We're working our spine all the time. But if you just go in cycling, you're just going to be in a fixed position. If you're running, you're, you're kind of uh, in, in a fixed position. So really please uh, be aware of your spinal movements and get some of those twists going as well. So flexibility and, 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 uh, and movement-based exercises. That's my suggestion as i say loads of stuff out there at the moment uh, it seems that everybody's um uh, turned online obviously for obvious reasons so there's plenty of stuff out there keep moving uh keep getting out of breath um, they say uh, you should sweat for 20 minutes a day uh, so do an exercise that makes you sweat for 20 minutes a day whether that's you know uh, you know high low whatever it's a it's it's a kind of idea that you can make you think actually I've gone for a walk uh, but I didn't actually sweat I didn't actually get the heart rate up high enough to sweat so that's that's my my word of advice um, keep moving etc etc now um, I'm hopefully not going to speak out of turn now but uh, the word on the street is that they're going to extend the uh, lockdown for another three weeks okay and in my uh, in my view I'm going to be looking towards uh, four weeks from now I want to be getting back in the pool it may not happen but at least now I've got a, an idea a program that I can work towards so for me it's going to be four weeks 
um, four weeks till uh, I kind of get back in the pool. And so I'm starting to work on those kind of ideas, or working from that idea. So um, while I was going through the videos, I found uh, I found a video um, a few years ago. Ian and I were trying to um, film all the no tanks exercises in a clear and concise way, so we could describe them to people uh, without having to, you know, have a really complex video. So uh, we started. We we're going to do them all. We we're going to do them all, um, and we started with the standard warm up with five people, and how you would, uh, how would you run the standard warm up with five people? Um, it took a little bit longer than we thought, um, but hey, I've, got, I've just said I've got four weeks, so maybe I'll do the others in a similar vein. But uh, here's the video that we made that shows the standard warm up. So for those of you who are used to pool sessions, here's here's a reminder of what the standard warm up is 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 like. <laughs> So there you go. So um, that's for five people, and that's as far as we got. We didn't do any more than that. But maybe I'll dig out the Lego figures and um, try and do some more of those. Um, anyway, um, for those of you who want to know what a standard warm up is, there it is. You can you can check it out and, and check out. Okay, so without further ado, um, we're going to move on to the, tonight's exercise. So tonight's exercise is going to be a visualization. Now, I thought um, when we did it on the first day, I was telling people that I did it, uh, and I did it quite a lot. So when I was coming up for my, uh, when I was going to competition, or when I was doing some records, and in fact, even when I was coaching for records or coaching for competitions, I did the same thing as a coach, but um it really really helped me uh when i was training for 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 some some records because obviously i'm still living in london i could only train depth yeah once a once a month if that um so really doing visual walks really really helped me and uh, on the first day of the lockdown sessions i went for a visualization with you guys, uh, uh, a constant weight visualization. And I told you there was loads of things missing and asked you to put down in the comments with what kind of things were missing. And then uh, with this one, I've actually gone through what I put in. And I know there's things missing on this one as well because the whole point of doing the exercise is you go through it and you miss some stuff. And when you come up and in your mind's eye, and mask off, make the sign, say I'm okay, wait, 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 keep breathing, pull yourself up higher, wait, 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 what did I miss? So then during the walk, I'll be spending 10, 15 seconds just going through thinking as I'm walking, okay, what did I forget? What do I need to put in? I, mean, I mustn't forget to, and a couple of times I came back and I'd forgotten to grab the tag, um, which, you know, uh, it's, it's not what you want to not what you want to forget. So what did I forget? And then I did it again. So I did about four. So I'd do two visual walks away from the house, turn around, two visual walks on the, on the way back. And they get longer because you're putting more and more into them. But on the way out, um, I'm spending 10, 15 seconds between them thinking about what I'm going to put into the, to the next one. And obviously on the way back, not so much. Uh, and so it kind of works out. But um, I'm going to go through it now, and what I'd like you to do, I'm going to I'm going to keep time, and I'm going to kind of go through my points that I put in with my um, uh, free immersion. Now, free immersion, as I say, it's all back exercises, so that back burner that Tom does is brilliant. So we're grabbing long, and I'm twisting my body. So I'm twisting my body, so my hand goes around the rope. Say the microphone's the and I'm putting the hand around like this. 
okay, around, you can't see that, so I don't know why there, so around the rope, okay, which forces the shoulder to come up, okay, and I'm looking this way, and then the other hand goes around the rope, and it's really important you visualize this as, as we're going through these. Every time we do a pull, or every time I do a pull, every time I tell you to visualize a pull, it's not just a pull, it's a really long grab and a pull. So we're going to go through, I'm going to keep a time in and put into all the different uh, things that uh, I would think about on my uh, free immersion dives. So um, no fins on, uh, so bare feet. Again, it's important you think of these things before the dive, before you do the visualization, because it, the sensations that you're uh, visualizing should be as close to the to the sensations you're going to get during the dive okay so bare feet i really feel the water uh, lanyard on my left ankle um uh, no gloves obviously not obviously but no gloves um so uh, this is the position we find ourselves in so i want you to uh close your eyes and visualize don't worry about adding anything in just visualize what i'm suggesting okay every single thing i mention i'm going to do it slightly slower than a walking pace so that you've got time to visualize each part of it and really uh try and visualize each part but keep the breathing smooth so you're not holding your breath for this you're just breathing th through it in through the nose, out through the nose, nice and soft, but really visualize every step that, that I mention. Okay, so, eyes closed, push your bum back into the seat as far as it can go, so you're sitting up nice and straight, and breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, nice and soft. Now I float head up, so I would always start uh, in a vertical position. So I would have uh, my gri gripping the rope with my toe. So I wrap my leg once around the rope and then just grip it gently with a toe. And this allowed me to completely relax and soften down. Lanyard um, coming up from my left uh, ankle up and it just hung on top of my left hand. So I'd have my head to the right of the rope and I'm breathing nice and soft the right hand is just floating at my side and I'm breathing in for a count of five so that's one two three deep belly breath four five and breathing out dropping the shoulders elbows heavy two three four five softening down so my face is in the water seven dropping my shoulders sinking my head eight nine pulling the belly back 10, three candle blows, second candle blow, third candle blow, deep soft breath in, and I packed once, packed twice, packed three, four, and five, dip my right hand down, push up on the left hand, slide the right hand down, and the first pull, equalization, second pull, equalization, Big long third pull, equalization, fourth pull, equalization, left hand up, opens the hood, lets a bit of water in, pull five, and equalize, right hand comes up and opens the other side of the hood to let some water in, pulling six, slightly slower now, nice and uh, soft, uh, strong seven, equalization, pull number eight, another equalization, pull number nine, I'm starting to glide, chin in, relax the shoulders, stretch up for pull number 10, equalize, pull number 11, equalize, relax my hips, pull number 12, this going into the glide, I relax my hips, all the way up to my shoulders, soften my knees, and the last pull is big wanging pull, and hands to my thighs, chin in, shoulders relaxed, hips relaxed, knees and ankles and I can unpack at this point and equalize go back to chin shoulders hips knees ankles unpack and equalize chin in hips relaxed shoulders drop in knees ankles unpack equalize I can feel the rope on my left shoulder and I can equalize feel the rough rope means I grab with my left hand open my eyes stretch down with the right hand reach for the tag take one second to be there just be there 
Got a tag and a pull one. Nice and strong. Nice and strong. Number two, reaching up. Pull number three, reaching up. Nice and strong left hand. Pull number four. Number five. Pull number six. Keep my chin in. Shoulders relaxed. Drop my hips still. Ankles, knees. Pull number seven. Pull number eight. Slowing down ever so slightly now. Chin in. Shoulders dropped. Hips relaxed. Knees and ankles. Pull number nine. Pull number ten. They're slower now. Listen for my safety to be calling for me. As I keep pulling, I don't count anymore after these. I'm just listening for my safety diver. Dropping my chin. Shoulders are soft. Eyes are still closed. Feeling for the float. Feeling for the float. Another pull and I start floating up. Break position and hit the surface. Left hand high. Breathe. Hook. Breathe, hook, breathe, hook. Mask off, look at the judge, make the sign, and release my hook and say I'm okay. And breathe. Hold myself high, hold myself high. Breathing, breathing, breathing. And then I relax. Okay, so that's my dive um, in its profile. And I know I forgot things. Um, right at the beginning when I hang on the rope I should have already put some water in my hood um, I should have adjusted my belt usually it's uh, just ridden up a little bit so I try and move it down before the dive so these are things that I could have put in that I completely forgot about and as I was diving I thought oh, I forgot that, I forgot that, I forgot that um, I should have broken position after I hit, hit uh, pull number 12. I break position, hands to the tops of the fronts of the thighs with a rope on the left hand side. I didn't mention that. Um, so it was always for me 12 pulls got me uh, got me to the point where I was hitting the glide quite well and I always had a cheeky extra pull in there because um, I love diving quick. I love sinking quick. That's my, my, that's my shtick. Um, so 12 was my number, always 12, plus a cheeky one. Um, and I could leave the cheeky one quite late. Uh, it meant, meant I'd go even faster. Whew. So um, keep your eyes, uh, if you uh, open your eyes, you can you can close them again. I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to try and add in um, the extra things. So... In fact, I'm not. I'm not going to write. No, I, I, I'm not. I, I, sorry, I, I put down. I put down some notes here, um, and said um, second second dive. I'm like, that's fine. Well, I'm not doing a second dive. That's a bit much. No, you're going to do the second dive. You're not going to do it now. You can do it after the video is finished. Okay, but I want you to add in the things that I missed. Okay, so. You can have a listen back to that one. You can have a take some notes. You can you can do however you, you want to do it. But I'd like you to do a free immersion dive, the same as what we've just done, exactly the same. And try and add in the things that I've told you that I've missed. Okay, and anything else that you think uh, should be in there that you want in there. Okay. Um, an interesting point: uh, shoulders are always the first point of relaxation. Shoulder, 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 shoulders. If you can relax your shoulders, then there's a good there's a possibility you can get to your hips. And this is the same when you do a static on your first session, or whether you do a, a static a, a world record a constant weight dive. It doesn't matter. Start, start with shoulders, and if you can relax them, you can you can soften the, the hips. Now, if it's a depth uh, dive, you're you, you're going to be uh, always just altering your position slightly, um, and uh, if you're if you've broken position, your hands beside you. You're always just going to be just with the head till you get the speed up uh, that you don't need to. Um, so the hips are, will always just just tense up a little bit as you as you're correcting uh, your free fall. Your hips will just tense up. So super important you uh, relax the hips, relax the hips, relax the hips. Now, if you can relax your hips and keep them relaxed for two or three seconds. Only then can you start to think about relaxing your knees, okay? Um, because if your hips are in the wrong place, your knees are going to be in the wrong place. They're going to be in the wrong place. So um, uh, you'll hear me if, you, if you're if you're a senior, you've heard me say it to you. If if you've if you've been around seniors, you'll be you'll hear me to telling them about the knee position where the knee should be in relation to the hips, and and it's it's a position that. 
If I'm telling you the position, you've not got it. All right? If you've got it, then you don't need to be told because your relaxation is, is so good that, or, or good enough, that means the body holds in that soft position. Okay. Knees are going, and when you get to a, a holding your knees relaxed for three seconds, which is tough, okay, when you can keep your alignment well with uh, so the shoulders are straight away gone. Once you, once you've got them, you can go to hips three seconds, then you can go to the knees, but don't forget your hips tense up. You've got to go, go back to the hips, and then your knees again, and you go back to the hips, and then your knees. And if you can keep your knees soft for three seconds, then and only then can you let your ankles go. So it's super important when you're going deep that you still go through the, 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 the same process. Always start with the shoulders, chin position, shoulders, chin position, shoulders, and then possibly the hips. Chin position, shoulders, chin position, shoulders, simply possibly hips and knees. Okay. And this is where the coach comes in. So I know Adam's watching some of these, and he'll back me up on this if he's watching somebody diving. It's um, out in Menorca. We're coming out to Menorca. Fingers crossed. Um, this year, uh, or if you're out with Marco or Owen or, or, or Julian or any of our, or any of our, uh, our coaches, um, that's what we're looking for, uh, the ability to uh, get the hips relaxed. Okay, When you've hit free for all and you've got the position correct, then the hips and then possibly the knees. That's what we're looking for, hips and knees, hips and knees. And if you can get the knees for a few seconds, then the ankles come on. Um, that's the format. Okay, so uh, I'll leave that with you. Um, you can go for it again. I've quickly added like five things to it that uh, at the end of that. So give it a go. And um, I think that's it. It's uh, Wednesday tonight. So tomorrow, um, I'm just trying to work out times because if it's Thursday, then I'd have had to stop because of uh, of the clap at uh, 8 o'clock, which I missed last week. Um, but it's not, it's Wednesday. So that's cool. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, any questions, as normal, put them into, um, uh, put them into the, um, the, the comments after, after I put this up. Um, I, I, I'm just waiting to see if there's anybody any questions coming up. No, okay. So thank you very much for that. And in fact, I, what I'll do, I'll just just for the fun of it, I'll show you the uh, standard board again. Ian insist, insist, insisted that Yoda was the person on the side of the board. So swim a length, and you come up and rest. Three times you can go. And when you get back to the shallow end, you rest on your back. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow night. Cheers.